hi viewers welcome to this learning session and uh, basically I'm just creating a course on data sufficiency so I just wanted you to take you through the data sufficiency because you know it's an integral part of the GMAT quantitative part and uh, out of 31 questions you can expect approximately 50% of the questions that will be of the data sufficiency format let me quickly get you well acquainted with the type of data sufficiency questions that we're dealing with Data sufficiency questions are the questions that come with five standard options. Unlike problem solving questions, we have five fixed options right here. And the options say that the statement one alone is sufficient, but statement two alone is not sufficient and so on. I think we can make the maximum sense out of these options only if we have a few questions. So let me quickly tell you that the data sufficiency questions always come with two statements. So this is one of the examples of data sufficiency questions that I think we should be uh, we should be taking the reference from so it's a question is x greater than 1 and we have two statements understand the basic things first that the statements are always the piece of facts that means these facts are just to help us to answer this question so first statement is a fact the second statement also is a fact the very first commonly made mistake is that the students always try to validate the statements themselves. Remember, you do not have to try to validate which is already validated by the question. So take it as a fact, take it as a helping additional supplementary information which is needed to answer the question. For example, here we have a question is x greater than 1. So it's a typical question which needs to be answered in the form of either yes or no. I've categorized it as type 1 question because always we get the data sufficiency questions in two possible formats. There is this type 1 and there is another that is type 2. Now type 1 question is a question in which we always need to give an answer to the question in the form of either yes or no. While the type 2 questions out of this type what is the value of x. That means to answer this question we must have the unique value of that unknown variable which is x in this case unique value means there should be only one value more than one possible values of x would mean that the information is not sufficient it's exactly like if somebody asks you a question what's a name and you say that my name is adam and some people call me bernie as well so the person who is actually listening to your response will be confused because you have not answered the question with a unique response because your name could still be either Adam or Bernie. You understand? So the unique value of x means there should be only one value of x only then we consider the statement is sufficient. So understand the one basic fact that the statements are the facts. We don't have to judge them. We have to use them to answer the question. Now, every question comes with these five standard options A, B, C, D, E. Let's quickly understand these options first. And then we will also learn how to deal with the data sufficiency question. The first option will be the correct answer of a question if statement 1 alone is sufficient to answer the question but statement 2 alone is not sufficient. And option B will be the correct answer of the question if statement 2 alone that means the second statement can answer the question but the first statement cannot answer the question. The C statement would be the correct answer when each statement alone when together when each statement alone is not sufficient neither statement alone is sufficient but when they are combined together so remember we combine the statements together only after we have proved that the statements individually are insufficient to answer the question so when the two statements together are sufficient but neither statement alone is sufficient then the answer to the data sufficiency question becomes option C the D option says that each statement alone is sufficient which means when a question can be answered using the statement 1 alone as well as using the statement 2 alone then we answer the question as option D. E option says that statement 1 and 2 together are not sufficient so after the two statements individually are insufficient we combine them then there can be only two results either together the statements will be sufficient or even the together they will not be sufficient if they're sufficient then we answer C if they're not sufficient then we answer E. So this is how these five options are placed it's always suggested that you remember these five options. A small acronym to remember these five options in the sequence will be that you can remember them like A, B, 10. A is 
that first alone is sufficient b is second alone is sufficient instead of c i have written it t t stands for together they are sufficient e each alone is sufficient and not sufficient even after combining them together so this is the very first beginning understanding of the data sufficiency going down the line i will discuss type 1 question in such a way that I will discuss five different questions who will have the answers A, B, C, D, E so that you understand in what situation the answer to the question will be option A, in what situation the answer to the question will be B. So there is a detailed discussion about the types of questions in data sufficiency that will take place in the next subsequent videos that you will see. But in this video there is one more thing that I want to clarify. What I want to clarify is that how do we proceed when we have the questions and we have to look at the options. So let me just quickly write down a tree diagram that GMAT book recommends us to remember. So let me just quickly remove them for a while. And uh, so the sequence in which we always proceed is that first of all we check statement 1. Right. Now, when we check statement 1, there can be only two possible repercussions. Either it will be sufficient or it will not be sufficient. So let's check, is statement 1 sufficient? So there can be two possible responses. The response can either be yes or the response can be no. Now, understand one thing. If the first statement alone is sufficient, then we are left with only two options A and D. Remember, these options A and D are the options like Romeo and Juliet. They live together and they die together. Which means if statement 1 alone is sufficient, then only A and D live and option B, C and E immediately die. Because B, C and E option do not support the argument that the first statement alone is sufficient. Right? So that's one possibility. If the answer is yes, you quickly remove option B, C and E. You are left with options A and D. And if the answer is no, then like I said, the Romeo and Juliet, they both die together. And in that case, the remaining options that we are left with are B, C and E. Now, what happens when statement 1 alone is sufficient? So let me just quickly expand this yes side first and then I will expand the no side later. Now, if the first statement alone is sufficient, then we quickly check the second statement that means now our second objective will be to check the second statement we check is a statement to sufficient now there can be only two possibilities answer could either be yes or it could be no now we were anyway left with only two options if statement two alone also is sufficient then we can rule out option A as well because option D becomes the correct answer which says each statement alone is suffi sufficient. So we mark option D as the correct answer. And if the answer is no, then out of these two options A and D, D option is ruled out which says that each statement alone is sufficient and A option becomes our correct answer. So this is how we can define this tree structure is that option A becomes a correct answer in this case. Now, Let's quickly go to the second possible scenario in which the answer to the first statement's checking is no. Suppose the first statement alone is not sufficient. Then we have already ruled out A and D. We are left with only three options B, C and E. Now, what we do now is we quickly check statement 2 alone. So, once again we check the statement 2. There can be two possibilities. Let me just quickly write it down. Is statement 2 sufficient two possible answers are either yes or no now if the second statement alone is sufficient that means if the answer is yes then out of the three options left because the second statement alone is sufficient so we can quickly eliminate options c and e which says that the statements individually are not sufficient so the answer to the question is straight away becomes option b all right so in case of yes, the answer becomes option B. Now let's quickly look at the second case. If it is no, that means out of the three options B, C and E, B option is also out because second statement also is not sufficient. What you do is now the next step is you combine the two statements, right? Combine 
the statements and then you have to check whether the combination of the statements is sufficient or not sufficient now so the next question is is statement 1 and statement 2 together sufficient now once again there can be only two possible responses either you say yes or you say no so now you understand if you say yes then clearly the answer becomes option C because C option says that each statement alone is not sufficient but together they are sufficient and if even after combining the two statements the information is not sufficient then you quickly answer to the question as option E and that is how the dealing with all these five options is done in sequence manner. So I will stop this video here however with the next few videos you will understand how exactly do we proceed in the questions because I will be discussing individual questions in which the answers of data sufficiency questions will be A, B, C, D and E in the individual questions. I hope you enjoyed this small explanation of data sufficiency and you will like more about the next videos that I am going to present to you. Thank you so much.